wedded forever in friendship and labor, a mighty republic. <laughs> So, I mean, that is the land of unconfirmed radio. Yes, we came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> did it have anything to do with your visit? No, oh, I'm sure it did. That, uh, that you're not having any restrictions on those who would choose to have an abortion for non-medical reasons puts you on the extreme side of this. Well, that's just not true. I said, quote, the unborn person doesn't have constitutional rights. And my question is, at what point does someone have constitutional rights? And are you saying that a child on its due date, just hours before delivery, still has no constitutional rights? Under our law, that is the case, uh, Paula. I hate to think it's all over. I've lost my heart. Is just nodded and told my friend, let's go. And I thought somebody from behind had grabbed a hold of my arm, but it was her. She grabbed a hold of my arm and my hand, and she pulls me into her, and she says with this very angry look on her face, which had been so pleasant seconds before, and in a low voice says, do you understand everything you do? And that frightened me. Do you think at that point she knew that Bill Clinton raped you? Or do you just think that she knew something happened? I, what do you think she knew? I, at that moment, people have asked me that, said, well, do you think she knew what happened? At that moment, and I have to go by what I felt then, and the look that she gave me, I felt like she knew. And that she he was, raped you? Yes, and that she was telling me to keep quiet. Keep quiet about her husband's rape. Yeah. What difference at this point does it make? Does it make? What difference at this point does it make? What difference at this point does it make? What difference at this point does it make? What difference at this point? Difference at this point? What difference at this point does it make? <laughs> The main question that everyone has is, was that a picture of you? Well, the main question that a lot of people are asking is, did I send the photograph? I did not. This was a prank, a hoax. You know, we're trying to get to the bottom of the photograph, you know, why we've retained a, a firm that is going to take a look at the internet security that we have to make sure this doesn't happen again. Photographs can be inserted, photographs can be manipulated. Um, we're trying to get to the bottom of it. But the important thing here is this was a a prank committed on me, you know, someone named Wiener, it's pretty easy to commit for pranks on me. And we should keep a focus on that. This is not... As soon as you answer the question asked you, sir, we will. I'm with you, buddy. I'm with you. You follow an awful lot of young women on Twitter. Um, is there a reason that you have so many ladies that you're following on? We appreciate you coming out and you're talking to us. You're smiling. <laughs> good objects, but you're not answering the question. So can you answer this is now So I'm proud to say today I am a Muslim too. It brings out the passion, the eloquence, it brings out the personality. Now the next leader I'm going to introduce, I have said repeatedly, 
uh, is not only a great voice for fairness, a great activist, but she has a, a deep surplus of personality because of her Brooklyn upbringing as well. And uh, <laughs> Linda, you, you, whatever you try and do, the personality comes through and that's a compliment, okay? <laughs> You're very Brooklyn and we love you for that. Uh, she's been one of the leading voices uh, for this holiday and I'm honored to have her join us, Linda Sarsour, the Executive Director of the Arab American Association of New York. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we are taught to plant seeds, um, not knowing if we will see the trees that will be grown from those seeds, but today we stand here to see the fruits of our labor, Mayor. You kept your promise to our community and we will keep our promise to you. Congratulations to our community because today this is our win. This is your win. This is a win for our children and for future generations in this country. <laughs> Muslims have been in this country since the days of the founding. And this is the message that we send today, not just in New York City, not just in New York State, not just the United States, but across the world, that Muslims are part of the fabric of this country. We make our country proud, and today, New York City made us proud. I stand here as a proud product of the New York City public school system. And I'm also the proud parent of three current public school students today who are here with me to see history in the making. Sisters and brothers, we made history today in New York City. And I'm so proud. I'm so proud of every mother who carried a petition every person that set up a meeting with a New York City Council member, to my Coalition for Muslim School Holidays colleagues, you are the most amazing thing that has happened to our community, and I thank you for all your hard work and your dedication. Thank you, Chancellor, for telling our students, telling my children that they matter, and that the public school system is just as important for them as it is for anybody else. And thank you to the elected officials that are here and those that are not here. Congratulations, Mabruk, this is a big win. We're making history today, and all of you made this happen. Thank you again, Mayor. Thank you. You've heard mentioned several I times the coalition. Under what circumstances it's acceptable to say that I wish I could take their vaginas away. They don't deserve to be women. And just to give that context, that's one of your tweets off your Twitter. So, let's give some context here because, you know, we have... Uh, this is an event organized by an Asian American, right? Let's just get some, let's get some context to this, what's going on. Celebrating a community, right? Talking about communities of color who are being directly impacted at this moment. And I have a young white man in the back who is not directly impacted by any of the issues that I mentioned. You think you can I do want to express thanks to you, Donald Trump, for being with us tonight. Uh, we need your building skills, uh, your uh, gusto, um, your uh, rent packets for people on Wall Street who represent diversity. Uh, beyond that, in terms of reaching out and being inclusive, he's done that too. Uh, and created for many people a comfort zone when I ran for the presidency uh, in 84 and 88. 
and many others uh, thought it was either laughable or something to avoid, he came to our business meeting here in New York because he has this sense of the curious and a will to risk to make things better. And so aside from all of, of his style uh, and his um, pizzazz, he's a serious person who is an effective builder of building for the builder of people. Last year he was a part of our workshop, of our panel workshop on what are the challenges and opportunities. And so this, a year later, Donald Trump. I will tell you, a large percentage of the people, and especially in construction, that are building these great jobs are black and minorities, and I'm very proud of it. We have uh, close to 25 percent, and I think the number's going up, and they do a great job. There are no better builders than we have in New York, and a big percentage of that is black and minority folks. So I just want to thank everybody in the room for being here. I who saw you, and he's a very famous person and he wanted to give you a present too. So watch this in the monitor. I don't know if you know who, who he is. Hi, Megan, my name's Donald, and you probably don't know me, but I was watching Maury's show the other day, and I must tell you, you really hit me right here. Uh, I think you are so beautiful, and both inside and out, I had a little something, a little gift that I gave to Maury, who's a friend of mine, and a very good golfer. Don't ever play him in golf. He's a very, very good believer. And I gave him a little gift for you, and I hope you and your mother have a good time with it, and you're very special, and you just keep it up, and keep up that attitude. So good luck, and you stay in touch. So, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, he has his name on more buildings in New York City than any other person. And besides that, he is one of the most generous people I know. And he wants you and your mom to have a very special check. And, and when we talk about Donald Trump, when we, he gives out checks, we're not talking chump change here. So, look at that. You know how much that's for? You get all those zeros right? <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll be back. What would you do differently, Donald? I'd make our allies, forgetting about the enemies, the enemies you can't talk to so easily, I'd make our allies pay their fair share. We're a debtor nation. Something's going to happen over the next number of years with this country, because you can't keep going on losing $200 billion, and yet we, we let Japan come in and dump everything right into our markets and everything. It's not free trade. If you ever go to Japan right now and try to sell something, forget about it, Open. Just forget about it. It's almost impossible. They don't have laws against it. They just make it impossible. They come over here, they sell their cars, their VCRs, they knock the hell out of our companies. And hey, I have tremendous respect for the Japanese people. I mean, you can respect somebody that's beating the hell out of you, but they are beating the hell out of this country. Kuwait, they live like kings. The poorest person in Kuwait, they live like kings. And yet they're not paying. We make it possible for them to sell their oil. Why aren't they paying us 25% of what they're making? It's a joke. You've said, though, that if you did run for president, you believe you'd win. Well, I don't know. I think I'd win. I tell you what, I wouldn't go in to lose. I've never gone in to lose in my life. <laughs> and, and if I did decide to do it, I think I'd be inclined. I, w I would say that I would have a hell of a chance of winning because I think people, I don't know how your audience feels, but I think people are tired of seeing the United States ripped off. And I can't promise you everything, but I can tell you one thing. This country would make one hell of a lot of money from those people that for 25 years have taken advantage. It wouldn't be the way it's been, believe me.